Okay, you should be able to go back and forth between standard form and factored form. So if you have this polynomial in factored form, what you want to do is expand it by doing the distributive property. So first do the exponent part. 2x minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 3. So a common mistake is just for people to um, do x squared minus 1, just, but you need to actually write out x minus 1 times x minus 1. Then I'm going to multiply these two to get 2x minus 2, and then I can, I can distribute this right here, and then after I do that, I can distribute this to here, so in the end, you're going to get f of x, because that's what it started as, f of x, the function, equals 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 10x plus 6. So to classify the polynomial by its degree and number of terms is its degree 3, so you're going to call it a cubic polynomial. And state the zeros and multiplicity of each. So x minus 1 is a factor and has a multiplicity of 2, so x equals 1 is a 0 with a multiplicity of 2. So I'm going to write x equals 1 with a multiplicity of 2, and then also x equals negative 3 is a factor, and that just has a multiplicity of 1. Okay, also be able to write the polynomial in factored form, and what you're going to have to do is factor it. So I can factor a negative 3x. I want to change this to a 6. I changed it on the key on the review to a 6. x squared plus 6 Oops, if I change that to a 6, this is going to turn into 2. and then divide negative 3 by 45 and you get negative 15. So this is actually a negative 2. If I factor out a negative 3. So then I'm going to factor this further and do negative 3x times x minus 5 times x plus 3. So this is the polynomial in factor form. g of x, that's my function, equals negative 3x times x minus 5 times x plus 3. It's nice to factor it because then you can actually see the zeros. So classify the polynomial. It is a cubic and it has three terms, so it's a trinomial. And the zeros are at 0. Don't forget, if you factor it on x, it's going to be x equals 0, x equals 5, and x equals negative 3. So these are all multiplicities of 1. And then this, this one, multiply or write in standard form, I'm going to expand this. So it's negative times x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. So you want to do multiply through by negative 1. So it's negative 1 minus 4, or negative x minus 4. And then I'm going to expand this. This turns into x squared plus 8x plus 16. So over here, I'm going to actually show I'm going to multiply these two and get negative x cubed. Multiply these two, get negative 8x squared. Multiply these two, get negative 16x. And then negative 4x squared and negative 32x and negative 64. So in the end you have to write this in standard form. So it's going to be y, because we didn't do f of x, 
This is the highest degree, negative x cubed. Then I have negative 12x squared, negative 48x, and then minus 64. So if you look at the zeros, or the name of this is a cubic polynomial because it has four or more terms. And then the zeros are going to be at x equals negative 4 with the multiplicity of 3. Okay, then down here, you should be able to divide during using synthetic division and long division. So if x minus 1, if we're dividing by x minus 1, we're going to write a 1, and then I'm going to write the coefficients all across. So degree 4. Notice how we skipped degree 3, so I'm going to write a 0, negative 3, 5, negative 6. And then I drop down the 4, so I multiply 1 times 4 is 4, then I add 0 plus 4 is 4, then I multiply 1 times 4 is 4. Then I add negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Then this is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Then I add it to 5 and get 6. 1 times 6 is 6. Add these together, 0. So this is my remainder. So this means that's a factor. So I'm going to write this polynomial out. So if this is my remainder, this is the constant term, this is the linear term, quadratic and cubic. These are the coefficients. So my answer is 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus 1x plus 6 with no remainder. Then over here, I write my coefficients out 5, negative 3, and I'm skipping the linear term, so it's 0, got to hold it in place, negative 6. And I'm dividing by x minus 1 again, so I have to write 1 right here. So I carry down the 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So this is my remainder. This means that x minus 1 is not a factor. So this is my linear, this is my constant term, linear quadratic. So I write it as. 5x squared plus 2x plus 2 with the remainder negative 4, and I'm going to write it over the divisor, x minus 1. Okay, also be comfortable doing long division. So long division, I write my divisor, x plus 2, and then my dividend goes inside x cubed. So I'm, I don't have an x squared term, but I need to hold it in place. So I do plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 5. So then I look at how many times does x go into x cubed, or what do I multiply x by to get x cubed? And I have to multiply it by x squared. So I put it above the x squared, the quadratic term. Now I'm going to take right here, and I'm going to multiply this by the x squared and the 2, and write it underneath the x squared term. So it's going to be x squared, x cubed, oops, right underneath the x cubed term, I mean, x cubed plus 2x squared, and then you're subtracting it. So you've got to be careful when you're subtracting this. These two will cancel out, but 0 minus 2 is negative 2x squared. I feel like that's where people are going to make the mistake. Then I'm going to break down my 0x. So now I look at how many x's are in negative 2x squared. So there is negative 2x's in there. So now I'm going to multiply negative 2x by x and negative 2x by 2 to get negative 2x squared minus 4x. So I subtract these, negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared cancel out, but 0x minus negative 4 actually turns into positive 4x. Bring down the 5. So how many x's go into 4x? 4. And then I multiply 4 times x. 
and 4 times 2. And I subtract. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. That's my remainder. So my answer, my quotient, is x squared minus 2x plus 4 with a remainder of negative 3. And I write it over the divisor. Okay, second one, x minus 2. This time I don't skip any terms here, so I don't have to worry about zeros. So x squared multiply x cubed minus 2x squared. Subtract negative 4 minus negative 2 is actually negative 2x squared plus 2x. And then I'm going to write a negative 2x because negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared and then plus 4x. And then I have 2 minus 4 is negative 2x plus 5. So this is negative 2. Now I'm going to multiply these two. So it's going to be negative 2x plus 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. So my quotient, and I, sh I was, should have done better about putting the x squared term above the x squared term, but I got sloppy. So it's x squared minus 2x minus 2 with a 1 as a remainder, and I write it over the divisor. Okay, then right here, use the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem is if you plug in, if you have x plus 4 as a factor, you can plug in negative 4 into the function and get the remainder. So without actually doing the division, you could get the remainder. So if I plug in negative 4 for x, for this one I get negative 205. So that means that x plus 4 is not a factor because there's a remainder that's not 0. Same thing with this one. I can plug in negative 4 and I get negative 808. You can check it yourself, but I plugged in the function. Okay, and then at the end, is this an even or an odd degree function? I can tell it's even because it's starting up and ending up, the end behavior. So it's even. The zeros are where it crosses the x-axis, touches the x-axis. So it looks like there's a multiplicity of 2 right here because it's touching it and bouncing back. But So the zeros are negative 2, this looks like 1, and 3. The y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? It's crossing at 0, 12, and you should be able to do this on your calculator too and see them. The relative min, okay, on this graph the relative min, there's actually two low points in respect to the area around them. So the relative min is at negative 2, 0, and 2, negative 10. But you should be able to also do that in your calculator. If you can't, there's calculator tutorials for it. And then right here, the relative max looks like roughly 0, 12, but it actually looks like it shifted to the left. I'm just going to approximate here. This one looks like it's an odd degree. The zeros are approximating at negative 3, 1, 4. The y-intercept is crossing at approximately 11. And the relative mins, again, I'm approximating, is positive 2.5 and negative 12.5. But also, you should be able to do this on your calculator. And the relative max looks like about negative 1.5-ish and then 20.